Hey guys, William Murphy here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode on Gareth's Mini. So today we're going back to the engine and um, I'm going to turn my attention to the clutch. So today I'm going to be doing a Verto style clutch replacement. Let's get into it. This build series is proudly sponsored by Luntstone. Luntstone is a UK independent electrical engineering contractor delivering design, manufacturing, installation, commissioning and maintenance service expertise to a broad range of customers across the industrial, retail, educational and commercial sector. So if you want to find out more about Luntstone, please check out the website link in the description down below. Without further ado, let's get on to today's video. Okay, so in this episode, we're going to be turning our attention to the clutch. So let's... Spin it around, give us better access to uh, the area we're working on. So, the pre Verto clutch is a slightly different style to the Verto. So, this, the clutch I've done previously on Luke's was a pre Verto. This one here has the slave cylinder mounted actually on the wok before it was mounted up here with a longer arm and a longer push rod. So, it's a self adjusting clutch, this one. So, once the clutch travel is, is worn out, that's it, it's, it's game over. A, close, a clutch is required. So, um, it's pretty much the same process though. I need to remove all the bolts around the wok. I need to remove this bracket. Um, so it's two bolts for the slave cylinder, and then it's three bolts for the bracket. Um, I've got the retaining pins as well. They need to come off. Um, and it's already been off previously because there are bolts missing. So I'm gonna take them all off. When I put them back on, I'll put all the bolts back together. Uh, conveniently, the starter motor bolts have been put back in because I've got my um, locking tool to lock the flywheel in place. Um, and yeah, it should be a pretty straightforward job. It's much easier, obviously, out the engine than it is in the engine. I haven't got to try and manoeuvre and try and work out a little bit some pieces. Um, I think one of the biggest issues I had was actually locking off the nut because I had to use all the other. One of the biggest issues I had on Luke's car was actually replacing the or removing the flywheel because I used my tool from Guessworks and I couldn't get a socket onto it. But obviously, I've got all the room here and it's great. So, um, let's start by taking some of these uh, bolts off. So here we have the setup of the Verto clutch. Now it's very different to the pre-Verto, um, be it that it's all one unit. You've got a cup to um, force on the diaphragm. The diaphragm then contracts and uh, applies the clutch. And uh, it should be pretty, well it's a nice little setup really. Um, I just think this is a bit more, a bit more complex. However, I think it's a much better style of clutch. Uh, personally, but uh, let's get this flywheel bolt out. Use my locking tool to lock the uh, flywheel in place. We'll get the flywheel off, and then we'll see what the damage is. But um, the reason I'm changing this actually, there's no there's no damage to the clutch. Um, the clutch itself uh, is an unknown quantity. Um, but I said to Gareth, well, while the engine's out, it might be worth just replacing some of the bits which will be easier to place off the car than on the car and for the sake of the price of a clutch kit um, I definitely think it's the best way to, to go about it So this is the locking tool I've got uh, it's from JB Fabrications and uh, it goes in the back and it actually just locks into the teeth of the flywheel 
the holes all align up. Uh, go, yeah, it goes in that way. And the holes align up, and then you bolt it in. And it just holds that flywheel in place so that when you come to undo this nut, the flywheel's not spinning, it's much easier. With the impact gun, things will be a little bit easier anyway, but um, yes, I don't want to rely on that. Especially when this is in a car, you can't get the access into to tighten it up. Now if you notice that when I'm doing things, or undoing things, I'm always making them sure they are slack first before I go and do it with the nut or the gun. Because what I don't want to do is snap any bolts. And then the same for when I come to do them up, I'll be uh, using the ratchet to start them off with my hand. And then before they get tight, I'll be in uh, stopping. It's just a way of quickly winding the, uh, the nuts into place. So in this lunch box, it's not my lunch, this is my guesswork puller. Now I made sure that I stored it all safely so that I don't have to worry about it getting damaged or anything like that. So uh, yes, obviously first thing to go on is So that's in like that now. That is tight. I'll tight by hand. I can't get any really tighter because I haven't got a uh, socket will fit in there. I need to invest in a socket. I'm not quite sure what I used last time to be honest. But uh, nothing I've got is. Speaking of this one here, will fit, but it won't go inside the the casing. Hmm. Okay. That's wound in there, it's not going anywhere, it's tight. So next up, I need to make sure I use the correct um, bolts. So, huh. just like that. That's what we need. So the Guessworks kit comes with three different bolts. These are quite a wide thread. There's one there, one there, and oh, a close one, and one there. That's the side for now. that off. Hello? 
Hello, mate. How are we? Good, thank you, mate. So the old seal is now out and uh, I'm going to try to replace that and I'm going to get the new tool, this seal tool, new seal and then put it all back in. So, go to my uh, snap-on box and I'm sure it's not that drill. There we go. That's the seal. And up here is the seal tool. Let's get them fitted. New seal fitted perfectly, and uh, turn our attention now to the clutch. So, let's move some stuff around. So, this is the Verto style clutch. You've got six bolts holding the diaphragm onto the clutch plate onto the flywheel. So, all these six bolts need to come out. I'm pretty sure from Looking in the box the other day, they supply two. Oh, they supply six new bolts. So um, let's get all these undone. I'm going to use my gun, and uh, let's have a look at the condition of the clutch. Just put the clutch back together for one second and I'll get out the new one. So this is a Borg and Beck kit and it has all the things in it that I will require. So first of all, a new cup, which is like a, uh, it applies the pressure to the diaphragm and pushes that down. Secondly, a new release bearing that goes on top of the cup. And then as you put your clutch down, the slow cylinder pushes out the arm, the arm pushes in the bearing, the bearing pushes onto the cup, the cup pushes onto the thrust washer. I'm sure the children's story something like that. Six new bolts. A new friction plate. And a new diaphragm. So the diaphragm itself is a pretty significant piece of kit has the uh, friction plate in the back I've got the bolt holes that's obviously where you 
the holes over here to attach your um, puller onto. And, uh, or is it? So, if you turn it over, we've got a friction plate on the back. We've got the holes in the back for the, the puller tool. And there's also the holes around for the, um, the plate to go on. So look at the old one. I need to get these bolts out and they will then come out here. This whole shaft will come out and get placed into the new one. Now I'm just waiting to hear back from uh, Paul Jeffries, an engine builder uh, from Jeffries Performance or uh, Mini Garage. So I want to basically find out how to do this job without balancing the flywheel. Now, when you look at some things, they say you have to balance the flywheel. Whereas some people say you don't, there's ways around it. So I'm just waiting to hear that from Paul. Once he gets back to me, I can then take the things off, fit them all together and fit this without getting it balanced. Um, the majority of people probably won't be able to do it or don't have the, uh, the, sort, the resources to do it. Uh, I'm in a position where I don't know anyone locally that can balance it. Um, and when I fitted these previously, I've never had them balanced and they've never been a problem. So I think we should be okay. Um, just need to make sure, I'm going to measure up the, the, the disc plate, make sure it's the correct one. I'm pretty sure it is, going by the age of the car. Um, but yeah, there's 180 or 190 mil, and uh, we went for the 190, which is for 1990 onwards. Um, this is a 93, 94 car, uh, a pre-injection carbureted model um, with the 1275. So I'm pretty sure that falls into this category of the 190 mil, but I just want to make sure 100% before I go and install it. So for the time being, um, I've just marked up this here, so there's a line with a bolt so I can see, I'm going to take it off, exactly which one's lines up. So let's flip this over, and we'll undo these bolts. Now the bolts that supply with the kit are actually to replace these. I thought they were to replace on the side, but they're not. So, um, let me sock it. Get on the old ogger dogger. I think I'll hold on to that. So gearbox side, which it's hard to work out which is the gearbox side because the gearbox is underneath. And the gearbox side is going to be on the inside, surely. Which is not right. Right, okay, so I've had word back from Paul. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, if you head over to his channel, I will put a link in the description below. Um, Paul is a fantastic engine builder, goes really step by step at how to do things. So the clutch itself is now pretty much assembled. Um, the questions I had were, how tight should these bolts be? And the answer is FT. For those of you who don't know, get on the internet and have a look. But uh, gun it up. That is tight. Uh, they've all got Loctite on them, um, the new bolts with the Loctite on. 
and then the clutch disc goes into the flywheel and one of the other things I had the question for was oh before we go on these uh, holes are actually off center so it'll only go and fit in one way and it'll align all of these six bolts and three for the puller so the other question I had was with regards to um, the fitment of this so when you fit it on you have a locating pin here and here which at the moment does not sit low enough down but bring you further down you can see there's a gap between here now what you do is you I'm gonna put some locks out on these actually you put these in finger tight the six bolts around the edge and then you mount it up onto the crankshaft so when I mount it up over here I'll put it on and what this will do is the clutch will then sit onto this uh, idler gear and everything will align true and centralized then I will nip these bolts up and then I will torque them to 70 to 80 foot pounds um, so let's put a bit of Loctite on these and then fit them in and we'll go over to the car or the engine and then we shall um, go to the ball Cinderella So you can see on the back here, you've got the, uh, the splines which will match up with the idler gear. Put that in like that. And that lines, it should all just push through. A little tap with the uh, mallet. That's a rubber mallet I'm using. Now that's all in, I can then just tighten these bolts up before I torque them down. So from the back, this is obviously engine side, you can see now there's a nice even space around this uh, clutch. So I flip it over, maybe a bit hard with one hand. Oh. I need to go around now and torque these bolts up. Now, so when you come to do the clutch, I always try to do a cross and then like a star pattern. So if you take, for example, this point here where you're starting, you go across, 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 and then back up to your original point. Now you can see that obviously I've got the star there, and what it means is it's gonna create a nice flat and even uh, application to, to do those bolts up with. It's not essential, but I definitely think it will, uh, it will definitely help when you're trying to do things and, and make it a bit more um, structural. Things like this may or may not matter, but there are some things on cars, like cylinder heads for example, are very important to do it in a very specific order so if you get into the good practice of doing it that way it will definitely help okay I'm actually thinking this is a better idea doing it in the car. Yeah, let's do it in the car. So with the um, flywheel now back in the car and the clutch set up, I'm just gonna lock off the flywheel um, with the hope and intention that I can torque these wheels up, or torque these bolts up and not have it moving around.
So next up is to replace the cap. Now it's a nice simple thing. On the old one, it has this little boot inside, which I'll place inside the new one. Which I won't place inside the new one. The new one actually has a, got a smaller inner diameter. So it's obviously takes this out of play. That's that. And then the um, release bearing will go up against this and then the clutch, etc. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Verto clutch assembly now complete. So I'm going to put the casing back on, once I get a bit of a clean out, um, and go from there. But actually, we're forgetting the release bearing, so let's get back onto the bench. Now this is the new bearing. It'll only fit one way, as you can see, and uh, it is secured with a like a rubber o-ring. So first of all, I'll get the old o-ring off. So they went out, and it should just slide straight off. So give this all a bit of a clean inside, because that is pretty disgusting. And uh, I'll clean the whole thing out, because that's rank. Okay, so there we have it. So the Verto clutch is now installed and it's ready to be fitted to the car effectively. Um, now someone has had a go at this previously. Uh, the clutch that I removed wasn't that old. Um, and you can also tell when you look at things like this where the bottom bolt and the side bolt, which are the two hardest bolts to get to, to take them on and off, um, were left out. Now, I don't have any spare bolts to fit into these. But if I did, I probably would fit them in, um, just to make sure when the next person did the job, they did it properly. Um, but it's not an uncommon thing to do. Um, there's more strength in this than is needed. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good job. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it all turned out. Um, there's a couple of things I still need to do just to sort of finalize things. And one of which is to adjust the arm, make sure that the, the, the throw is, is correct on the throw bearing uh, or the throw out and then also fit up and bleed up the clutch, which we can't do until it's actually fitted to the car. But it rotates great, and uh, there should be no problems or qualms about any issues going forward with that clutch. So fingers crossed it's all gonna go well. I have every bit of faith in my work, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that respect. And uh, that is a next part of this complete. There's a few more bits to do on the engine, and then it's, uh, it's time to turn my attention to the body shell. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, massive shout out and thanks to Paul Jeffries for uh, your help and your uh, your guidance throughout this. Um, more to do with like the torque settings and um, actually aligning of the clutch. I mentioned balancing earlier, but it's uh, the alignment that was I was trying to get my head around. Um, and yeah, it's just a case of fitting it up and tightening it down whilst it's all in situ, removing it, talking it. Now I actually talked it in situ. I found that a little bit easier. And uh, I'm really, really pleased with how it's all turned out. So thank you, Paul, for your help. Uh, yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up button, comment down below, and uh, if you can and haven't done so already, please consider becoming a subscriber to the channel. Really, really, really means a lot to me. Um, it's just fantastic to see the channel growing the way it is. And um, yes, I look forward to sharing the next update with you very soon. So thanks for watching. Take it easy, and uh, I will see you next time.